fellow vapors, Vaping Newbie here, and thanks for joining me. This is going to be kind of an odd video, <laughs> like all my other videos aren't odd. Anyhow, um, it's to blanket answer some questions that I've been getting via private message and, and emails again, and I, I like to do this every once in a while to keep things up to date. So if you're more experienced, you might want to just, you know, click off and, and move on because it's nothing you don't know. Okay, so you're still here? All right, uh, let's spend some time together. I always enjoy that. It's going to be kind of choppy because I'm sort of uh, reading an email and then doing a version and reading an email or a message and, you know, doing a version. So I apologize for that. But let's get it started. Um, another question I see a lot of is how often do I change my, my wicks or my, my coil heads in, in a clear miser? Well, you know, uh, the easy answer is always a week, week, you know, a week and a half to two weeks. Um, that is too easy of an answer because again, there are so many variables involved. Um, what wattage are you using? Uh, what kind of juice is it? Is it a thicker juice? It, uh, how often do you use it? Uh, I personally use many, many tanks. So if I was still only using clearmizers, I probably could go three or four weeks on a coil head because, you know, I have so many different tanks. Now, having said that, there's also the flavor change. If, if you're vaping a minty flavor and you go into a sweet flavor, you're going to get, a, you know, might not, <laughs> might not necessarily be a good crossover flavor. So um, keep that in mind. How often do you use it and, and, you know, uh, the juice and the wattage. The, to me, the rule of thumb has always been, if it tastes burnt, time to change it. Uh, if you're going from uh, distinct different flavors, you might want to wash it out. Now, there's another issue. Some coil heads don't have to be just changed. You can wash them, let them sit air dry for, you know, a day, two days, and your coil head will be back and good as new. Uh, but if you're getting a burnt taste, it's pretty well to me, in my opinion, and, you know, don't want any backlash. In my opinion, it's pretty well, it's, it's, it's over. Second question that I want to cover is, um, I get a lot of people writing, they're saying, oh, they just bought such and such a tank or such and such a device, and um, they're really enjoying it. And I want to make sure, and again, this is just me maybe being, uh, you know, overly precautious, but uh, one of the things that I do upon receipt is, is wash out the, the, the specifically the tanks. And, and I know when you get it in, it's like, yes, 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 I want to use it, I want to use it. But uh, really, it is worth waiting just a wee bit for. And um, the reason I say that is there could be machining oil, uh, even metal shards in there. A good clean out will take care of that. Um, some people use vodka. There are people that use uh, distilled water. I use extremely hot water uh, to boiling point and um, this soap and I just give it a really really good cleaning a really really good rinse and then I let it sit in air dry overnight and I know it's tough because you're sitting there and you're sort of it's right there but it, it's just better overall and and so that is upon receipt I've been in brick and mortar shops where people will, will pick up something and, and put juice in it right away and, and start using it I'm not saying they're wrong I'm just saying I couldn't do that um, I have done it and kind of felt stupid afterwards. Um, it's just me. I, I want to clean it out. Now, another thing that I want to discuss is even devices. And um, this is a clone of a Nemesis. And um, I wanted it because I thought it looked really sharp when I put on. Back then, I had a lot of uh, Black K funds, Black Russian 91 clones. And uh, when you put on that black device, in my opinion, I just think that looks really sharp. So... Um, I was looking for a black mechanical and found one at a, a shop in Canada that um, I won't mention their name because uh, I won't advertise. Um, and when I got it in, I put it in 18500 mode because that's what I wanted it for specifically. And the battery kept getting hot and I couldn't figure out why. And I was talking to my great and good friend Ken of Great Canadian Fog. Check out his TV show and uh, I'll put a link for it down below. Um, I'm going to tell you something. He came up with the most logical thing that I never thought of. The threading on the device was also painted black. And it was causing the battery to sort of short out because it wasn't making the proper connection metal to metal. So uh, I didn't even think of that. So uh, this, this is going back many, many, many months. So I appreciate that, Ken. And he told me, you know, just... Take, take a wire brush and clean out the threads and, and you'll be fine, which I started to do. And then I realized 
I'm lazy. So uh, I thought, well, what else can I do? So I chucked that and went online and found this. And I found this at a Chinese manufacturer that we all know. Uh, but um, I only buy from them that I cannot find locally. And pick this up. Now look at the inside of this. There's not a speck of paint. So they did take the care uh, in, 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 in doing that, in making this. Now, having said that, the first thing I did when I got it was I completely washed it out. There are no, it's a tube, right? There are no electronic, uh, electronic devices in here. So I gave a really good washout considering uh, from whence it came. And uh, I thought that would be the, the, better, the better way to go. Uh, my Authentics, my Black Akuma, um, this was a gift from some very uh, old dear friends and used it right out of the box. I just love this device. Did I come home and clean it? I have to admit, yes, I did. Um, but very light cleaning because uh, this is a extremely high end and I have my uh, Authentic Nemesis, same thing. I used it, it was uh, given to me at Vape Can and used it the rest of the, the time that I was at Vape Can and love these devices. But I had a bit more, and it might maybe unfair, but I had a bit more confidence that these were really clean and, and well used than something that cost, you know, fifteen dollars. And and maybe that's unfair, like I said, but I didn't take the chance. I just gave it a good clean out, and it and it certainly certainly didn't help. Uh, didn't hurt. So uh, let's go on to the next uh, question. Another question I get is uh, the PG VG ratio, or, or more often than not, which PG VG ratio should I order? What what do you think? Um, again, there are a lot of um, factors that, that go into that. Uh, the basic rule of thumb when I started vaping was the higher the PG, the more the throat hit and the more the flavor. And the higher the VG, the more the vapor and uh, lesser flavor. I find that that's not true now. Uh, a lot of the juices that I'm vaping are high VG juices and the flavor is just phenomenal. So um, I think that sort of rule of thumb may have gone out the window. Uh, I'm not a juice maker. I'm just telling you by the, the juices that other people create, um, you know, what I've been finding. Uh, when I started uh, vaping, I was using a 30% PG juice and 30% uh, VG, obviously. And uh, now I find that that throat hit bothers me. I find it smoother on a high VG. Um, however, when I'm ordering, I order, uh, generally speaking, 50-50, depending if I want to get um, dripper type juices and high VG juices. Um, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, people do react to PG. They have a bad reaction to PG. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, if you don't, that's, you know, that's great. You, if you want to go that way, if you like that throat hit, and certainly there's obviously nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I, I generally will do a 50-50. Also keep in mind if you're using tanks, a lot of the high VG juices might be thicker and therefore they, they won't wick as well in, in, uh, you know, some of the small uh, clear misers that are, that are used. Um, some are actually recommended for drippers only. However, um, because I'm freaking nuts, I will put a, a, a high VG. I did a video with uh, this juice right here um, by Smacks called Mafia Princess. And it's a very, very thick juice. And I put it in my limo. I didn't even think twice about putting it in the limo. Um, and it was very, very thick going in. Uh, if I had that large surface area, because I top fill this particular tank, which I guess you're not supposed to do, uh, but I do top fill it, and so I had no issue getting the juice in. It just, you know, took longer, and um, so no, no problem at all. On a dripper, of course, it works quite a bit better, you know, because you have you just pull off the top of your dripper and, and everything's right there, so you're putting it directly on. But in tanks, you may not have that area, so you got to keep that in mind. So thicker juices that are higher in VG, you may have an issue in tanks. Uh, but again, it is, and so much of vaping is personal preference. Um, again, to reiterate, if I'm ordering, I'll go 50-50 because I tank more than I than I drip. And if I want a juice for dripping only, I will go higher on the VG. So I hope that sort of covers that question. It doesn't get too confusing. Just a couple more points. Um, Another question I get a lot is how often do I uh, change my coils and my wicks on my rebuildables? Um, again, that depends on usage. What I will do is I will take um, take the build deck out and look at the cotton. And because I have a lot of tanks, um, the cotton will last me quite a while. Uh, there are some people who say, oh, you know, every two days I change it. Well, I can go with the same cotton for a week easily, and it's still not burnt. I'm, again, not getting a burnt taste. 
and it, it's wicking well, that's fine because I have, as I said, I, I travel with, you know, five tanks. So they, you know, you're, by, by uh, changing up the tank all the time, you're elongating the life of, of the cotton, certainly, and the coil. Um, I will take a look at the coil. I'll rinse it under water. I'll take a little baby's toothbrush and give it a little scrub. And then I look at it. The eyes aren't as good as they used to be. I use a jeweler's loop. And I get real in close to take a look at the coil, make sure everything's intact, and make sure that it's 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 uh, usable. Um, if if it still looks clean, I'll keep it. If it looks like you know, there's a lot of crud on there, I'll switch it out because it doesn't take very long. So um, that again, that's just the way I handle it. But it will vary from person to person. And finally, one of the vapors, and and it's funny because you ask somebody to do the dishes, and 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 they go freaking nuts, and, and I'm one of them. Ask them to wash out their, their tanks, and they're like, yes. Um, people post pictures on Facebook. It's kind of uh, it's kind of insane. Uh, anyhow, um, upkeep of the equipment. Uh, we all have, you know, spent money on getting this equipment, and you want to make sure that you, you know, make sure that it's upkept as upkept, even a word dictionary, uh, as as clean as possible. Um, we discussed when you get it, you wash it. Well, it doesn't mean it's the last time it's got to be washed. Um, got my precious SX Mini here, and um, when I take this off, I take a simple Q-tip and go around the 510 connection, and what will happen is you're going to get a bunch of black. But what that is, that's simply the um, juice that's ferreted down and, and, and whatnot. This is a very clean device to begin with, out of the box. Um, I didn't have to do anything to it, but, uh, you know, juice does tend or can leak. Um, I've used this with drippers where I'm dripping and maybe I've missed, and uh, I always say I'm kind of a klutz in that way. So I always, you know, I clean out my 510 connection, and I do that fairly often. I'm a bit anal about doing that. Um, I want to make sure that it's in tip-top shape. I mean, it's as I said, they're expensive devices. You don't want to take something like this and just take it for granted. You want to make sure that it's kept as clean as possible. Um, then you have a tank. And um, this is what I was talking about washing day. What I will generally do uh, is, you know, once every every so often, and I don't have a schedule, um, I will take one tank and say, that's my tank for the day. Um, I get up as early as possible and wash each and every tank. And there are people that post pictures on Facebook and they take pride and it's like, yes, it's, it's washing day. You'll never, or I've never seen that in any, any other area that people get so thrilled that it's washing day. And you see people posting pictures of 10 and 15 tanks lined up all washed out and in, in almost military precision of the way they're lined up. So kudos to them. Um, another thing that I do, and I'm going to show you a couple of things, is I'll go in with a Q-tip every once in a while and clean out the drip tip. You don't think of that. But uh, when you wash it, of course, I give that a good wash as well. And I keep a baby toothbrush just to get into uh, threading and whatnot. But I want to show you something here on the base. This is the underbase of the um, limo in this case. And it will gather juice. Okay, it gathers it there. And hopefully you're seeing this. It gathers it there. So again, I just simply take a Q-tip not Q-tip brand because that's you know, more expensive. You can go to a dollar store and pick this up. And this is what you get. That's what's gathered underneath the tank. And then I do the same thing on that sort of sub-base, as I call it. And not all tanks have that sub-base, so that's fine. But when juice gathers there, you want to make sure you get to it. So now you have a cleaner sub-base. There is still a bit of juice there on the, on the bottom I want to get to. You may not get all of it, but you will when you wash it, certainly. But look, I mean, that's pretty nasty. I hope you can pick that up. That can be pretty nasty. And it can affect the flavor. So, um, again, part of, oh, my, oh, oh boy, it's cleaning day. And part of, oh, my goodness, it's crap. Uh, so it's just stuff that I like to do. So these are um, the most common questions I have. They're probably why people are maybe too shy to, to put it out in public, which which is fine. Um, they're sending me messages. They're sending me emails. So I, I appreciate it. I'm hope, hoping you all got something out of it. Uh, you know, I always like spending time with you. Thanks for dropping by. Stay healthy and happy vaping. Take care, folks.